Hey, it's Ginger with Ginger Lee Designs and Soulful Things. Here's a little excerpt of my newest upcoming video that we'll be releasing soon. Click the link below to find out more about my How to Create Abstract Hearts class that's coming up. Thanks and look forward to seeing you. Um, my palette knives that I use, these are my two favorite palette knives. This is a uh, Liquitex and this I bought on Dick Blick. It's a blue like coated silicone handle. It has or used to have a lot of um, like a uh, stick like like surface that won't let things stick. But if you let it sit in the water too long, a lot of that surface will rub off. So you kind of have to be careful with that because you don't want them to start to rust. So the best thing is to clean them off after you've used them with some paper towel and then scrub them off right away with soap and water. And that way you don't ever have to um, work it down straight to the metal and you always have that protective coating on it. I really, really like this guy and I really like it for doing hearts, um, especially if they get a little bit bigger. On this size of a heart, I prefer this guy because um, it's just easier to manage when you get to use it, when you get to doing big hearts and you're using this guy, it's too easy to make a lot of little strokes because of the shape of the palette knife. So I find that I either use this or even like my bigger blades. So for this purpose, I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to use this, um, Liquitex somewhat pointy, but definitely long blade palette knife. I've put some of this extra heavy gel gloss on it, on my little glass palette. And what I'm going to do is I, like to make sure the consistency is great it's kind of a little bit like toothpaste almost consistency and what i do is i like to make sure to get a nice amount that's evenly distributed on the palette knife it's got a really nice clean ridge um, if i catch one that doesn't have a clean ridge i'll show you what that looks like but right now this is a great this is a great load on the knife on the blade so this is just a little glass palette, which is awesome. The glass is really great to work with because it's easy to clean up. Um, but this is the extra heavy gel gloss, and I'm gonna show you how to gel a heart with clear gel. Looks white, but it's gonna dry clear. So the way that I do it, you need to practice and try your own ways because practice makes better, not perfect, but you need to figure out what way works best for you. I do it though where I gel the left lobe first and what I do is I unload my palette knife on that left lobe leaving that higher peak to the left then I squish it to the right I come back a little bit to the left right now I'm just grabbing that little top point you're gonna have to kind of play with this and see what works best for you and I follow around that ridge leaving or that edge leaving a ridge don't play with it too much or you will end up making a bunch of little strokes and you don't want that especially not on such a little piece so that was that right side now i'm going to come back on this left side i'm going to push some of this out and then i'm going to come back and pull down with my blade now all this little jaggedy along there not fond of so i'm going to take and just go straight down to the wood with my blade and pull off remember this is drying clear so you don't need to stress about there being maybe a little bit of gel that ends up on the background you don't want a bunch of gel because it's going to take the paint differently but a little bit of gel is not that big of a deal now i'm going to grab a little bit more of my gel off of my palette these little bits of pink that are showing up in there are fine because they're not even going to show up once it dries clear. And even if they do, I'm going to be painting the surface of this gelled heart anyway after it dries. And there's pink and red going on everywhere, which is why I chose that particular color of a watercolor pencil so that if any does get on, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It just looks like part of the project. Okay, again, I unload as such. I pull the ridge to the right and I come around to the left. Okay, on that particular one, what often happens is this hard line will develop. <clears throat> and I'm okay with there being a hard line kind of close to that point, that inner point of the heart. But I don't like it going too far down. And so what I'll often do is kind of smooth it out like such. So that um, it's not so defined for when I come back to paint. I don't want it to limit where I want to put paint. That is the reason why I like straightening that out. Now, if you saw, I did it two or three different strokes. If you get going with too many little strokes like this, 
you're going to end up with a whole bunch of distraction as you can see and again it's going to force you to paint this surface differently than if it's somewhat smooth but yet it has texture so i always say there's a fine line between how much and how little texture that you want it can get to be too busy if you put too much texture i.e little strokes but if it's perfectly smooth then it's not interesting okay so all this down here is a hot mess but i'm just going to take my palette knife i'm going to dig straight down into where that meets the wood and i'm going to try to clean up these lines like that I'm okay with this up here, but this I'm not okay with. So I'm gonna clean up these lines as well. And I'm just um, getting it straight down to the wood and pulling off. Now, most of this surface actually has a super thin coat of gel on it right now. Again, it's clear, so it's gonna dry clear. It's not a big deal, but it's going to take the paint a little bit differently than I'm gonna put on top, which is fine, but just be aware that that does happen sometimes. So that is clear gelled heart number one. Like I said, it looks white right now, but it's actually clear gel. Let me just do a few more for y'all. Probably not going to talk as much. Just going to let you watch. So one thing I noticed that you might have noticed when I gelled this heart is that I actually did this side first on that left lobe instead of filling in the right side of the left lobe. I filled the left side of the left lobe and brought it all the way down first. Sometimes it's just the way that the gel ends up on the canvas that I feel like it might work better for me to do it that way versus the other way. But like I said, incidentally, you really need to experiment and try out the different ways to do it because it might, you know, each way might feel different, will feel different. And it's up to you to determine which way feels most comfortable. You know, we all have a dominant hand that we know of, but there's also a dominant way that our brain processes things. So even though your right hand might be your more dominant hand, it might feel comfortable doing the left side first just to give you some sort of a baseline. So this guy, again, I'm just going to do it and let you watch instead of trying to talk as much so that I can make sure that I'm focused went on that right side first and then the left side all this jaggedy not a fan so i'm going to pull some of that off you want to dig straight down you can also use your finger if you want but honestly i feel like the um palette knife makes it a lot cleaner where you're gonna where you're gonna take stuff off so um that's the left lobe and this will be my right lobe. Sometimes you have to scrape off the excess, which is what I just now did on that palette because it might cause you to get a bunch of not so pretty marks that you want or that you don't want in your in your art in your content again in this case art see this blob that little hole right there I'm not really a fan of that I feel like it's gonna be distracting when I come to put paint in if you think about it the paints gonna go across that line but then there's gonna be like a little divot there and it and the only way to get paint in there then is to take a brush and job like blot it in or dab it in with my finger and it could lead to trouble. So at this stage of the game, I can still fix it. And so I'm going to go ahead and fix it because then that way I just don't even have to stress about it later. I can just go ahead and go about my business with painting. Again, my whole goal with all of this is to try to make the process of putting paint on the surface later easier. 
and not be forced to do what the gel is making me do with paint, but let myself paint what I think the heart needs to be painted. Sometimes that gel can determine how you're gonna apply paint, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to get the gel in, have a little bit of texture, not too much texture, because it's gonna force you to get all these little striations of paint, but not too little texture, because then it's just gonna be a flat surface, and you're gonna have to figure out how to give it depth with the paint. And you also wanna make sure to fill in the space, as I said, but you also want to let some of this great stuff in the background show through, so you need to try to get your heart in the right spot, but also um, still look like a heart. So those are the things that you're kind of contending with. Right here, I've shown you how to gel directly onto the little wood blocks. If you're more comfortable, you can always practice gelling on a different surface, like either on a stiff piece of cardboard or just a little wood block that has just even white paint on it um, because then you can feel more comfortable with your palette knife and not feel like you're risking messing up your piece of art. But always remember, you can always scrape it off. If you catch it at the right point, you can scrape it off and you can always paint that surface white again. So don't stress about any of it because it's really just for fun and it's really going to take some learning and some practice. So just practice, just practice, 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 and you will feel more confident with it and just do the best that you can and not stress too much because it's supposed to be fun and it's just art. And like I said, you can scrape it off and repaint it white if you're not comfortable with the outcome. So that is clear extra heavy gel gloss on a prepared surfaced background that we painted and you let dry for a period of time until it's completely dry, no longer sticky. You trace that heart with the watercolor pencil and you come back with your palette knife and your gel and be patient and give yourself a little room for error because it's gonna take some learning possibly. That's that.